As I mentioned in the object nav video, when you do the state list nav 6446, the IP address space for IPv6 and IPv4 has to be equal because you essentially do a one-to-one -one network NAT. But if most of your traffic is going to be initiated from the IPv6 side to v4 and not the other way around, and you want to conserve your IPv4 address space, what you want to use is what's called stateful NAT64, which allows you to do things like dynamic NAT and PAT, and then you can selectively choose your resource and then allow it using an individual static NAT, whatever that needs to be accessed from the IPv4 side. Okay, so that leads us to task number two, it's a stateful NAT64. First, we need to remove a stateless NAT64 configure in task one, so it does not interfere with what we're about to configure. And then we're going to have to configure static NAT64 on firewall one to allow R3 loopback one to appear as 33033 to R2. Let's go ahead and do that on firewall one. Let's do show run NAT because we need to remove this command here, so no. Copy and paste, show NAT, and that should be gone. All right. And now to configure a static NAT, go and look at our diagram here. We're going to be translating 2001, 3003 to 33033. Okay, so we need to define our object network. This is going to be a real IP of 2001, 33 host of 2000 looks like I misspelled the name so let me do it one more time 20133 and then host of you can just copy and paste 20133 then we object network map to 33033 and it'll be host 33033 okay then we can complete our NAT statement with inside to outside source will be static since we're doing a static one-to-one -one NAT and then translating from the real IP to the map IP and don't forget to specify the destination because we still want to use the stateless NAT46 so it will be destination static just like what we had up here right there so let me just copy that so that part doesn't change so I copy and paste the wrong object there you go show net make sure it's installed properly and now on r3 to do a test ping to 2001 i should just go up arrow here there you go that should do it so ping r2 loop back and you can see now the source ips of r3 has been translated to 33033 is the way how r2 is seeing it okay up arrow show net you can see we got five hits and then we can also do the tell net if i can find the command with the up arrow here Right there. There you show connection. Okay, hitting R2 loop back one and then show NAT. Obviously we got one additional translation hit and then show X late. You can see we have a line right there for our source IP to be translated specifically to 33033. Okay, so that is stateful NAT64 with static NAT with individual IPs. Next, we're going to configure dynamic NAT on firewall 1 to allow any IP from 201301, which is essentially R3 loopback 2 subnet. And make sure it appears as one of the IP between 3311 and 32. Okay, so this is a dynamic NAT. So first, we need to create a NAT pool. Or actually, we're going to have to specify the source subnet. So it will be real 201301 with a subnet of 2001301 slash 64. Okay, and that is our three loop back two. And then we have to come up with an object for our NAT pool, object network map, 3311 to 32, that's the name. And we can specify the range based on that, which is 3311 to 33132. Then NAT inside, outside, source dynamic real 2001 let me just copy then so make sure there's no typo so it should be right here for the source and then map to pool and destination should be the same so i can just copy it right here enter 
show NAT, you can see it gets inserted right underneath the first NAT statement that we did. Okay, so now if we do a ping, make sure you source from loopback2, you can see how it selected an IP from the pool 33130. Okay, and we can even try to change the IP of loopback1 on R3. So let's do loopback1. And let's change that to um, actually, it should be R2. My bad. Since we're dealing with loopback2 here, so interface loopback2, no, and let's make it 10 like the other one. Okay, and then do the ping one more time. And let's see what the IP will show up. So you can see the firewall select different IP to NAT it out based on the IP from the pool. So this time it's 33117. So let me put that back with loopback2. 3, right? And now let's do a show xlate. You can see here the two source IP that we use, 3 and 10. It keep the state in the NAT table as far as what IP from the pool it was selected. And as long as this particular state is still active or valid, from R2 we can try to ping 33130, sourcing from loopback 0. You can see that it's also bidirectional unless you tell it otherwise with the unidirectional command. So that is the dynamic NAT. Next, we have to configure a PAT on firewall 1 to allow the IP from 2001302/64 and make sure it appears as 3323, our single IP. Now with the PAT, follow the same configuration process with the object network. Define the source subnet. 2001302. Use it as a name. And then for the subnet, just copy that and then slash 64. All right, and then the IP that we're going to path to is network map 3323 and host. Since we're doing a single IP, although you can do path pool if you like. But here we're just doing a single IP and then complete the NAT statement with the source dynamic Frio 2001302 to map 3323 with the destination. And let me just copy that from what we configured earlier. Enter. Now R3, uh, trying to do a ping sourcing from loopback 3. You can see the source address of that been translated to 3323. We can do the telnet also, so let me find the telnet command here, sourcing from loopback 3. And on the firewall, we show connection, show NAT, which you see uh, hits on our NAT statement, and then show xlate. And you can see how it maintains the state with the full IP protocol and ports information, and this is for the stateful NAT. Okay, so I believe that completes our task number two. Task number three for DNS 6.4, we need to enable DNS lookup on R3. So it used Windows 2008 DNS as a server. And then we need to verify reachability to R2 loopback 0 and 1 by its name, R2L0 and R2L1.labmins.com. So let's first enable name lookup on R3. The command IP domain lookup. And then Make sure we we'll source it from loopback1, which should be reachable from the outside. And then for the IP name, the IP address of the DNS server is 162.16.12.32. So we need to translate that into hexadecimal. So with the IP name, we know it's going to start with 2001.22, which is our stateless NAT46. And then 172 is AC, 16 is 10, 12 is C, and 32 is 20. Should be a double colon right there. And if you're trying to ping that, sourcing from loopback 0. Oh, actually, loopback 1. And you can see it's pingable. So now if you're trying to ping the name, which is r2l0.labminutes.com, sourcing from loopback 1 again, you can see that it's not resolving. 
And this is because the so far the NAT statement, if you look at on the firewall, we haven't really enabled DNS 6.4 features. So let's take a quick look using this one as an example. If you do question mark just after the command, you see there's not really a DNS option. And this is because when you do a twice NAT with both source and destination translation, DNS is not an option. So if you say, for example, delete the destination part of it and do question mark, then you can see that you can specify the DNS option at the end. But since here we are dealing with both source and destination translation, we cannot do so. So I haven't really found a way to configure DNS or enable DNS 6.4 with twice NAT. So if you guys have any insight to that, feel free to share under the comment section below. But if that is not available, that means if you need to perform the DNS resolution across the IPv6 and IPv4 boundary, maybe the only option for you is to use the object NAT. Okay, so I just want to make a note for that. So that means we can't really accomplish our task number three. So what we're going to do is just going to go ahead and skip that to our task number four, stateful NAT 4.6. So if you have a special requirement where you have to NAT your IPv4 to a specific IPv6 IPs, and you cannot rely on the method of embedded IPv4 IPs with the IPv6 prefix, then what you need is the stateful NAT 4.6, where you arbitrarily map your v4 to v6 IPs. And for this task, what we need to do is to configure the firewall so the R2 loopback 0 can be reached at 2001.22 AABBCCDD by R3 loopback 1 through 3, while the existing stateless NAT 4.6 should continue the work. Okay, so this is just a simple static one-to-one -one NAT from V4 to V6 using a twice NAT. So first we need to specify object network real 172.16.0.2, which is R2 loopback 0 IP, and then host 172.16.0.2, and we want to NAT that to object network map. 2001.22 AABB CCDD with the host of this. Okay, then we construct our twice NAT configuration with inside to outside. Since we want to overwrite what we have currently with a stateless uh, NAT, we want to make sure that this particular statement goes all the way up to the top of the section one, the NAT table. So we need to specify right here, every question mark, position one with the source of, actually, let me do this. Let me do show run NAT so we can copy some of these. So NAT insight outside one source. So I'm going to copy this part of it and then destination static. Okay, and then we need to specify the object. So here we're going to use the map right here. And then the real, which is the outside real IP of R2 loopback 0. And then enter. And you can see now we're getting errors. It said map v6 prefix length must be less than or equal to 96. So anytime that you are deviating from the default behavior of stateless NAT, what you actually need to do, and that's what we're doing right here, is if you do question mark, you will see an option of net to net. Okay, so as soon as you specify that in your command, you can see that the command is accepted. And if you do show run net, see our new command goes all the way up to the top. But now that's only for the source coming from R3 loopback one. We still need to take care of the other two, loopback two and three. So we need to repeat the process. So let me copy this. And now it's going to insert into line number two. And then I'm going to copy all this. And then with the remaining of the statement, we'll review in the second here. And then for R3 uh, loopback three, right here, net inside, outside, line number three, source dynamic, go all the way to static here. And then the remaining. And if you show NAT, you see, actually let's do show run NAT might be a little cleaner. You can see that instead of three lines, we have six lines, but the first three line is conditioned based on the new mapped IPv6 IP that we have for the R2 loopback zero. 
Okay, so now if you go on to uh, 3 and ping, it will be AA, BB, CC, DD. Sourcing from loopback 1. You can see that's pingable, and the source is coming through as 33033 while hitting 182.16.02. Okay, same thing. We should get the same result for loopback 2 and loopback 3. Okay, coming through as the dynamic NAT and path. And for the firewall, if you do show NAT, on the first three lines, we have five hits each. Okay, we know those are being used. So that's for the, the new stateful NAT 4.6. While we should still be able to ping the IP through the stateless NAT 4.6 as well. Okay, that should work. Okay, so loopback 1, and that's AC 10.2, that's the R2 loopback 0. Ping, so you can see those still works. That still works, and loopback 3 still work as well. All right. And now if you ping back from R2, 2, 3, 3, 0, 33, sourcing from loopback 0. You can see it's coming through as the AABBCCDD, and this is because the match for the NAT table goes top down, and obviously will be caught by this rule right here that's on the top of the NAT table. Okay, so that's how you can overwrite the stateless NAT46 with the stateful NAT46. And that would complete our task number four and our lab. As you can see that twice NAT works fine when you only do stateless NAT64 or NAT46 or even stateful NAT64. But once you start having multiple stateful NAT46, you may be better off using the object NAT. As you just saw in our task number four that we have to keep duplicating the NAT config to maintain the same source NAT64. And this is because since we always perform both source and destination address translation, you're better off using the object NAT because it's decouple the source and destination translation and that way it will save you a lot of configuration if you need to come up with multiple combination or different combinations of those. And that concludes our lab with ASA 9.x, NAT 4.6.6.4, DNS 6.4, twice NAT. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.